Welcome back to the Sports Not NFL Conversation. And joining us today, one of my favorite guests, Michael Lombardi, of course, former NFL executive, host of the GM Shuffle podcast, as well as on VEASAN. You can find him there. Author of two best-selling books. And I'm telling you what, folks, with the holidays coming up, if you want a book for your football lover, these are the two. His latest is Football Done Right. And then, of course, Gridiron Genius is another one. You can follow him on x.com at M Lombardi NFL. Michael, this situation with Bryce Young, we're talking about quarterbacks today, this situation with Bryce Young and what's happening in Carolina. I mean, they've tried to improve things there, but it hasn't worked. Talk through what they've done and why Bryce Young didn't improve for them and why perhaps sitting him now is not a good idea. Okay, they spent $100 million on one guard, $50 million on another guard, and they're doing everything in their power to fix the quarterback, to get everybody around them better. Then – you know, they decide not to play him in the preseason. And then they play him in the third preseason game. He throws eight passes against guys who are all going to get cut. And then after what week one, he looks horrible, shocking. And, you know, they convert two out of 22 third downs. By the way, Patrick Mahomes has only converted five over the season, mm. over this year. So football throwing the ball isn't very good right now. And, you know, they bench him, which to me, I don't know what that does for the kid, his confidence, all those things. And, Look, you have to have a plan to develop a quarterback. You just can't draft a quarterback and say, go out there and win games for us, which is what the Carolina Panthers did. Yeah, and you look at the young quarterbacks, and this is a weird situation to me because I look around the league, and this stat, it's since 2011, which of course was the first year that you had the the rookie uh, wage scale, 10 quarterbacks have been selected first overall, uh, and they have a combined zero Super Bowl wins. Cam Newton's the only one that became a, a, an MVP award or, or earned an MVP award during that stand. When you look at this, there's never been a time when the quarterback is more important than right now, Michael. But but how do, how do these teams do this? I mean, how can these quarterbacks with so much talent come out of college? Are we over-evaluating them? Are we looking at it? Is all the hype because of the way technology improves everybody's opportunity to see these kids from the time they're 10 years old? What is it with these young quarterbacks and their inability to make it over into the league? Well, I think a lot of it is the fact that we think the college game and the pro game are similar, which they're not, mm. right? I mean, there's a va- just because college throws the ball more than they did in the past doesn't make you pro-ready. There's a lot to learn. I mean, look at Caleb Williams. I mean, you know, he's had one of the worst, re- one of the worst productive uh, elements against pa- against blitz than any quarterback in the league. He went to USC, you know, and he's he's, he's been horrible. He hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. You know, they can't run the football. They can't protect them. And so it, it's a, it's a growing process. You have to have a specific plan. You know, even when you do like Sean Payton at Denver, it it, it may not work out initially. You have to have, be thick skinned and you got to be able to go through the growing pains. It's through the mistakes that you get better. Right. I tell people this all the time, you know, on Friday before we played in Super Bowl 49, if Malcolm Butler doesn't make a mistake in practice, he probably makes the mistake in the game and we lose. But he made the mistake in practice. So we were able to win the game. And I, I think to me, that's that's what we all think about. And these quarterbacks, they're going to make mistakes. There's no denying it. And so that's what's going to happen. And, and life's going to go on. But I think there's too much pressure that they are the savior of the franchise mm. when they're not really ready to play yet. I think you have to grow and develop. Patrick Mahomes sat out all year, and then he developed into a really good player. Now, how much of this, Michael, is, I mean, the expectations, like you said, are high. The kid comes out of college, might have won the Heisman. I mean, like Jaden Daniels this year, right, with Washington. You have a kid like this who's coming in, and I think you're right. I think it builds. The fan base expects that quarterback to come in and do what he did in college, which, like you said, is not fair. It's a different game. But then you have coaches who get fired faster than ever. You have general managers who in most cases can get fired faster than ever. Some of them never get fired. Uh, but if you look at what's going on in that in that environment, What's the answer there? Is it is it finally a coach and, a, and an organization saying, look, we're just going to have a plan for this quarterback. Don't expect anything for two years or whatever it is and, and set the expectation themselves? Or, or is this just a, kind of a, a, a crowdsourced expectation, social media fans throwing all these things in? That's the world we live in. Look at Justin Fields, okay? Mm. Justin Fields averages 6.4 yards per attempt. You know, he, he the, the Steelers average 3.6 yards rushing. They haven't done anything good offensive. They've had 10 punts in two games, right? They've held, they, they, excuse me, 11 punts in, in two games. They, they've scored one touchdown. They've kicked a bunch of field goals. But he hasn't turned the ball over, and he hasn't fumbled. And so they've, they're 2-0. and 
And yet, you know, if he would have been not a retread, if he would have been the first pit, well, what's wrong with him, right? And so you've got a lot of people that don't know anything about the game trying to influence the game. That's the biggest issue is people are evaluating the quarterback and they don't know. It's like this ridiculous thing. We should eliminate cover two so that we can have more offense. Like, where did that come from? Like, what did that, like, when did cover two stop the passing game? Like, you know, it's like the reason we have bad offense is because the, the, the we don't have enough practice time. We have no training camp. I mean, that's why it's bad. Football is a game you got to practice and rehearse. Football is not a game that you could just go and say, okay, here we go. Yeah, no, too much involved there, especially for a quarterback in the NFL with the speed of the game and what's happening. But you look at C.J. Stroud, right? Of course, everybody uses C.J. Stroud now because uh, I remember a lot of people telling me, oh, an Ohio State quarterback's never going to make it in the NFL. Well, C.J. Stroud, when you look at that situation, of course, the kid, mature kid, and, and all of that stuff. But did he go into the right situation as well as being kind of the right mentality and the right talent level? Yeah, he's under center quite a bit, Scott. That matters <laughs> too, right? He can run play action. Yeah. You know, what's the number one offense in football right now? It's between the 49ers and the Saints. What do they do? They're under center. But mm -hmm. we want these shotguns. We want to put them in shotgun. And and now all of a sudden, there's really no run game in shotgun. Teams are doing it. I said all off season that the RPO game was dying. Just look at the numbers on the RPO game. They're trending in the downward direction. Defenses know how to defend it. So I think to me, it's like when somebody zigs, you got to zag. You got to go under center. You, you know, these teams can't handle running it. Look at the Eagles the other night. The Eagles have played 26 minutes of football on average in two games. They've given up 800 yards in two games in just 26 minutes. If they played a normal 30 minute game, they'd probably give up 800, 900 yards, maybe a thousand. So to me, I think a lot of it is we don't have enough practice time. There's not enough attention to fundamentals. There's not enough discipline. It's football is a game of fundamentals, discipline, and toughness. And if you're not practicing that, you're going to fall short. Michael, if you're a GM, as you once were, and, and you are in need of a quarterback going in, so you look at these teams that are going to be quarterback needy again, going into the draft, do you, do you still, if you find a guy and you like him, do you still take him in that first round? Or has it become so much that, you know, if you have four or five guys, three of them are probably overvalued and over-evaluated, and you look for a second, a guy set later in the round, what, how, does, how does a team deal with that now? Well, I think you have to find something that fits what you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what the traits we need. Here's the way we need them. And then we're going to develop them. And if you have to use a first round pick on them to get it, what do you care? Again, it goes back yeah. to what Bill Walsh said. It doesn't matter where we pick them. It matters how they play. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Michael, listen, we're going to close out with you. Appreciate the time today. Four questions. These are all New Jersey related. We're just going to go rapid through, get your, your, okay. your stream of consciousness right off the top of your head. All right. So here we go. All right. If you were a Sopranos character, we know how much you love Sopranos. Who would it be? Uh, who would it have been? Great question. <laughs> I think I think it would have been uh, Johnny Sack. Johnny Sack. Ah, why? Pragmatist. Yeah, somebody Pragmatist. who can give advice, be very pragmatic, see the big picture, and try to handle things. Either him or Silvio. All right. Okay, now we see, of course, uh, Bruce Springsteen behind you on the screen there. But tell me, when you think of that catalog, Bruce Springsteen, what one song just hits you in the in the feels every time you hear it? Land of Hope and Dreams. Oh, nice. Good one. All right. Now, tomato pie or pork roll? Oh, I love pork roll. Okay, pork roll. There we go. Now, the most New Jersey football player ever to play in the NFL. I mean, a guy who just represents Jersey, everything about it in one man. Who would it be? Oh man, that's that, that's an interesting question. I've got to go through my Jersey players. I don't know. I don't know as many Jersey players as as I should know. Probably. Do you have any hints for me here? Well, uh, I'll tell you, you. You know, I also cover the Raiders. I would say Phil Villapiano is a good good that's example. That's a great one up the north of Long Beach. That's a great one right there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Sarah Gusa, right? He's a New Sarah Jersey Goose, guy. That, the Goose, yeah. He was in the Sopranos too, so we'll give it to him. <laughs> there you go. See, I'm I'm linking them together here. Uh, but that's why. Oh, by the way, did you see what did you think of the Wise Guy documentary? Uh, with I thought David it Chase? was great. I thought it was really. It's a documentary about why guys who become head coaches should, should from assistants, should be head coaches. We wrote about this for the Daily Coach. This founder methodology. I think to me, David Chase proved that it was so great because he was over on every detail. Everything. Nothing was left to chance. You know, when Edie Falco's complaining about how she they couldn't put words in unless he said it was okay, to me, that's the level of attention to detail you got to be to be a great head coach. Wow, that's awesome. Well, Michael, thanks so much. We appreciate it. And uh, we will we'll hear you on the pod and we'll see you again down the line.
Anytime. Thank you. All right.